Thank you. Uh, I definitely will not be one of the hyper-technical speakers tonight. Um, the title recruitment consultant might have alluded to that. Um, I thought I'd give you a brief intro into how I got into the space um, and then market trends as we see them. Um, interestingly enough, although the numbers may be decreasing here, we're certainly not seeing a fall off in uh, jobs in the blockchain space relative to the price of cryptocurrencies. I um, first found out about blockchain and cryptocurrencies in October 2016. I went to a meetup hosted by a gentleman called David Siegel. Um, he was the founder or is the founder of a company called Pillar Project. Uh, at the time, there was probably 30 of us in the room and I was the only person that wasn't a developer. Totally blew my mind. Um, it was an hour and a half of how blockchain could change the world. Um, going into lots of different industries. I, I couldn't follow most of it. And then at the end, um, he gave some non-financial advice, but mentioned Ethereum and cryptocurrencies. Um, and if you were interested, not a bad time to learn about the ecosystem and speculate. Um, I thought about quitting my job. I, I went home, looked at the price. It was about $4 at the time. Um, didn't like the fact I had to put in my passport, photo, and personal details. So turned that down, wasn't really sure. Um, got in a little bit later. Um, and if anything that I do say tonight sounds like financial advice, my personal strategy has been to buy high and sell low. So please ignore anything that sounds <laughs> remotely financial. Um, but in doing so, I was attending more and more meetups. Um, I went to a really good one by a company called Gollum, GNT. Um, met a few people at the space there. And for the first six months of 2017, it was still really, really new, or it certainly felt like that from a, a recruitment point of view. Everybody was sort of a dev or, in, or interested in the space on a technical point. Not very many people speculating around the currency. Um, so I started working with clients in the space and as that grew it became um, very apparent that something that is still lacking is regulation. Um, although I haven't had a chance to read it, I've seen today that the Treasury report has come out. Um, I'll be hosting one of these tomorrow and that's probably what we will be talking about. Um, Crypto and Compliance Breakfast is a monthly meetup for C-level people and senior people in the blockchain space to gather together and talk about um, where they think FCA regulation is going in this country, uh, where they see market trends going, um, and trying to tackle some of the issues that are, arise from starting a business in this space. Um, when I first started doing it, I really thought that in two hours we would get some people in a room and we would hash out all the problems of regulation. That hasn't happened. Um, it's now been running for six or seven months. The FCA still haven't done it. The Treasury haven't done it. Um, and there are a lot of interesting companies working in that space. I actually went to a meetup where um, Simon Taylor of 11FS was speaking um, last week. And it has become quite clear that what people are hoping for from a regulatory point of view is uh, sort of market-led regulation. So not people that have very little um, information and knowledge of the space, but being led by what's actually happening, a little bit like the FX industry. Um, but to bring that into a sort of global consensus when states in America still have different regulatory rules um, is certainly a big challenge. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm certainly not going to talk about the ins and outs of Solidity or smart contracts or blockchain, but what I can tell you is um, how we see the industry moving. So um, the irony is also not lost on me that I'm a tech recruiter that clearly can't use PowerPoint um, or really sort of get the quality of an image up. But um, as the price of uh, cryptocurrencies has fallen away since December of last year, we haven't seen at all really a decrease in um, jobs in the London market. Uh, there were a couple of clients that we had that maybe halved what they were doing and there has definitely been a release of certain contractors recently. But in general, the job market in London for blockchain developers is, um, is, is still really buoyant. One of the issues that we are seeing is there are some companies and everything is a market. We tell our clients and we tell our candidates that all the time. Um, is there are some companies out there who can massively inflate what blockchain developers can get paid. Um, rightly so. If the money is there, you should go and get it. So a lot of this is actually focused on um, companies that maybe are not able to pay the very top whack for developers. And for us, that's more about identifying talent rather than looking for skills and experience. Um, at this stage, actually, it would be good to know who here happens to be a blockchain developer or a software developer or is interested in getting into that space. Brilliant. So that's, that's sort of exactly what I was looking for. I think a year ago, that would have been most of the hands up in the room. Um, and who here is actually interested in 
hiring developers or is looking to work in the blockchain sector outside of development? And is everybody else just really interested in, in cryptocurrency prices? Nobody's interested in those. Okay, not an answer I was expecting. Um, so identifying talent is really important if you cannot be paying the, the very top whack salary-wise. Um, to highlight this, we had a client that we were, um, or that we are setting up a mini, mini service provider agreement with, so we will do all of their technical recruitment and sit on site. Um, and a couple of the founding members that we were sort of engaged with said, um, oh, it's easy, you just go to a couple of meetups, hit up meetup, you get loads of blockchain developers. They'll be falling over themselves to come work for you. Not quite. So some of you may actually have received a small message from me before on Meetup Ethereum London was definitely one of the um, pages we targeted. 114 pages, every single person on those pages messaged, 23 replies, only four were developers. If this had been a year ago, those numbers would be totally different. Um, so finding out and attracting talent has definitely changed over the past few months. Um, what you're looking for is not so different for identifying talent at any stage in software development. So uh, because blockchain technology is still so new, research and development, self-starter, research is absolutely um, imperative in what you're doing. The space is still evolving and um, so is the technology. Um, some of the tokens that are out now and the technology behind them could be totally different in 12 months time, maybe even six. Uh, strong knowledge of object-oriented programming development and best practices. Uh, that links nicely with testing. Now, I must admit, um, most of the clients that we work with are working with Solidity and Ethereum smart contracts. So this is slightly more focused on, on that than anything else. Um, but in general, with blockchain, if there, if there is a bug in your, in your system, if there is a chink in your chain, that could end up costing you a phenomenal amount of money. Um, knowing what testing best practices are, TDD in OOP, um, development in general, being somebody that believes in if I can't test it, should I build it? Those are some of the qualities that we think are particularly important if you would like to be a blockchain developer. Um, functional programming skills, algorithms and mathematical background are also a massive advantage. Um, things like, bear with me a second. Formal proofs are um, particularly well linked to functional programming from my understanding. Um, crypto, cryptography is also particularly important. What we have tend to find is that if you really, really do want to make a move into this space, you are doing a lot of extra research. So you don't need to have experience of working with Merkle trees or you don't need to have experience of understanding elliptive curve pairings, but you do need to be somebody who has done enough research to confidently talk about it and show it's something that you can pick up. Um, as opposed to being somebody who has already done these things and is going to cost you a lot of money if you're looking to hire. Getting a role as a blockchain developer, be realistic. If you have spent six months on your own back working with Solidity, putting stuff on GitHub, doing code samples, that's a fantastic thing to be doing. That is going to make a massive difference, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be able to charge 30, 40, 50,000 pounds above what you're earning now. Um, a lot of the companies in this space are still startups, although they may have raised uh, an incredible amount of money in ICOs. If they've left that money in, in say, Ethereum and tokens, they may not have the same funding as they do now. Um, equally, it's not all about Lambos and getting to the moon. So depending on the reason you want to get in there and you want to do blockchain and you want to um, further advance the space, you need to be able to talk confidently about the reasons you want to move into this job. And something that we have seen, or certainly I think we see, is that as the price of cryptos has come down, more and more use cases have, have come to the forefront. So things like supply chain, intellectual property protection, um, there's some very interesting things about HR, um, third party legal entities being removed from fairly large scale deals and blockchain being used in that aspect is, is definitely something that is starting to come to the forefront as opposed to just um, investing as them as a, as a tangible asset. Uh, get networking, I think that's obvious. You wouldn't be here if you, if you didn't think that was important. Um, the space is still really, really friendly, I think. So certainly the, the breakfast that we hold, um, everybody's very keen to share opinions. Everybody's struggling through with the same issues together. Um, nobody really holds back. 
Uh, and I think the more you go to these things, the more that you are more likely to be put in contact with um, a recommendation or a relevant party. Identifying the right opportunities for your development with companies that match the purpose that attracts you to blockchain. Uh, again, have a reason that you're interested in why this company is using blockchain. Yes, if, if it is for a token or a currency, that is a valid reason to be doing it. Um, but it's good to know exactly what it is about blockchain, the transformative powers of this technology that attracts you to the space. That's it from me. Um, I hope you got something insightful. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I am certainly open to any questions. Just nothing too technical. <laughs>
I do kind of understand how difficult that can be. Um, from a junior point of view, pretty much all companies, this is my clients included, that have their specs on their website, look for seniors. It's never a bad idea to put yourself in there. We do have some clients that are looking for, for juniors, um, but it's the same sort of thing I was going back to. So if you really fundamentally know your basic principles and best practices in OOP, if you can prove that you are a keen advocate, not necessarily of TDD, but you understand its principles, keen advocate of testing, you've done some stuff in your own time, there will be opportunities out there. You just have to hunt a little bit harder. And if it's a startup, the, they may be looking for a trade-off in terms of you're going to gain all this experience with, with blockchain, but we may not be increasing your salary now. That's not always going to be the, the case, but there might be some sort of trade-off with that. But there should be opportunities for juniors, yeah. Thank you. In, um, in which area do you see the highest demand for JavaScript developers? For JavaScript developers, yeah. I mean, you're, you're in luck everywhere. E everywhere needs front-end developers. Um, at the moment, are you talking about in the blockchain space? The, yes, and the smart, yes, the smart contracts and blockchain space. So uh, any company that has based its offering on Ethereum and Solidity, Solidity was taken a lot of the basics from, from JavaScript. Um, if you have good fundamental understanding of JavaScript principles and ideally some node, um, you would be moving in the right direction, definitely. A really strong understanding of testing, so um, looking at Truffle for testing Solidity and seeing how it compares with Selenium or Cucumber would be a good place to start. Um, the amount of resources for developers, just even in terms of medium, is, is really powerful, but that would be a first opening point. If you wanted to go in a different route and work for a company like an exchange where they're currently not um, they don't have a token offering, but they're obviously in that space. There are quite a few exchanges that use Node as the back-end technology, and, and everybody's using React at the moment with the front-end. So that might be a sort of secondary step to get to where you want to go if you can't get to blockchain development now. It's fine, I can just shout. Please don't tell me. Do you focus primarily on placing developers, or do you also consider uh, uh, primarily developers. So strategic, do you, do you mean like CTO and, and, and within tech and software engineering? Or yeah, exactly. Like yeah. yeah, so um, myself personally, I, I now do executive search because my client base or a lot of my client base are in this space. I, I still dip into developers, but it's usually senior architects, CTOs, software engineering managers, that kind of stuff. Um, the CTOs in this space, we do a couple of things on retainer for. Um, yeah, so we, we cover pretty much everything in tech. Um, interesting, because the space is so small, when I started doing this, um, and I, I hadn't been doing the job for all that long, uh, recruitment, um, to not bore you, the skill set is pretty much the same. A lot of it is, is asking open questions, and if you can do a little bit of research on your subject area, for example, compliance and AML and KYC, I'm willing to bet you can ask the right questions to identify who might be good. So for a couple of my clients in the space, we fill chief compliance officers, head of customer service, because they were working with us exclusively and it was fairly easy to do, but in general, yeah, tech. Thanks. On average, how long does it take to place a contractor as opposed to a permanent Solidity JavaScript developer this period of time, this period of the year? Uh, well, there's sort of two, two questions. So the hiring trends that we're seeing in general now, or the, the people I'm talking to, um, December, November is never generally that good um, and I don't think it's really a trade secret that with Brexit the decision coming just around the corner a lot of our clients want to get their hiring done before November um, so we're expecting it to be a little bit quiet for the beginning of next year obviously there's a lot that can change with the Brexit landscape but that's how it's looking right now um, it really depends on notice periods so I, I don't think so if you need a contractor and it's a senior contractor that should still be a very quick hire you should be looking to find somebody within two to three weeks ideally because the market is so small that search will be a lot longer in London if they need to be on site here if it's a global search for remote developers that's a very different different question um, but notice periods are still between four weeks and six months um, the time to hire for perm tends to take a little bit longer and the process is a little bit more drawn out unfortunately Any more questions? I have one question. 
Yes. Have you noticed that the hiring trend is specifically uh, with developers only? Have you seen other kind of demanding roles pop up because of blockchain technology in general? Um, for my main focus is tech, so um, that's you know that's where my eye has been. Uh, I've seen a lot more people wanting to get into the space, and as such, there are a lot more advisory roles, particularly at the larger enterprise companies. IBM have been working with blockchain for a fair time. The banks are now increasingly bringing people into things like um, Barclays Rise. There's actually a lot of blockchain-based startups in there. Lloyd's have got an incubator and innovation lab. These areas are starting to bring in a lot of people. So with that, there's fintech marketeers focusing on blockchain. Um, there are legal, well, in fact, one of the um, companies that we as a company are associated with, their lawyers are now specialized, or some of their legal team are specializing in um, ICO launch legal wranglings, which is sort of slightly ironic considering what they're doing and, and what they might be doing. Um, but most of our focus is on, on tech. But certainly people wanting to get into the space, just in general, we get an incredible amount of calls and emails asking us, do we do, we do this side of recruitment? And unfortunately, we don't. But people definitely want to get into the space. All right, give a big hand of applause Thank for Thank you Toby. very much for listening. <laughs>